Vivia dear, how was your competition? says Candy in greeting. Vivia isn't allowing grandma and grandpa to watch her skate this year because she wasn't very optimistic about the result even before the competition began. She instead asked them to cook some good food for her so at least she could enjoy grandma's tasty food after the competition. As expected, not very good. I ranked 10 this year, replies Viria, who despite her disappointment in the skating ring, is very pleased with the good smell of the food. Grandpa, are you the one who cooked the steak? She asked cheerfully. The bone steak, haha, you have made the right guess. I added some red wine, perhaps you have smelt it says Edward. Viria knows that Grandpa usually adds alcohol to his steak, while Grandma uses more spices but no alcohol. Your ability to smell is as good as your skating. Now, can you guess today's soup just by the smell? asks Grandma. Oh, I wish my skating performance was as good as my ability to recognize food by its smell. I think it is seafood chowder, isn't it? says Viria. You are 100% correct, replies Grandma. Viria doesn't wait to be invited to the dining room. She has always acted as if she is in her own home when she visits her grandparents. Once she looks at the food on the dining table, Viria becomes even more excited. Fresh vegetable and berry salad with French dressing, grandma's delicious handmade croissant, and last but most exciting, grandma's chocolate cheesecake. She hugs and kisses grandma and grandpa who laugh at her excitement. Grandma and grandpa are both very good at cooking. It is always such a pleasure to have dinner together with them. They are soon sitting together around the dining table, and they begin to savor the delicious food. As they eat, they begin to converse. The first round of conversation is, of course, regarding the figure skating championship that Firia has just competed in. However, they soon find out that Firia isn't interested in talking about it, so they change the topic. Viria, have you decided which university you want to apply to? asked Edward. Yes, and I have also decided which major I want to take. I'm going to take an accounting major at Georgian College in Barrie, replies Viria. Accounting? Ha ha ha! So you want to follow our path of success? Edward chats happily. Edward and Candy were both accountants in the past. Now they both have retired, but they still work part-time as accounting consultants for some smaller companies and non-profit organizations. That's right. Grandpa, Grandma, you've got to help me prepare my college application. I really, really want to be accepted at Georgian College, pleads Viria. All right, don't worry, Grandpa says, and he wings. They eat and talk happily the whole night. That night, Viria and her mother stay with Grandpa and Grandma. Once Viria sleeps under the blanket, Viria takes out her iPad. She can't sleep, so she decides to watch the video of her mother's performance when she won a gold medal at a Winter Olympic. Viria loves this video the most. Marilyn Rose was such an awesome skater. Her jumps were so high and looked effortless. Her spins made her look like one of those toy tops that you would set spinning with a string. Her spiral was so elegant and her step sequence was so very smooth. She did everything perfectly. How Viria wishes she could skate as well as her mother. Viria loves skating as much as her mother loves it. 
Skating is her mother's life and so it is for Virya. Virya has practiced so hard, yet she still can't live up to her mother's legend. Unable to hold her tears anymore, she weeps bitterly. Virya Rose lives with her mother. Her father's name is Carl Smith. But instead of Smith, Virya decided to take her mother's family name after Carl divorced Marilyn. Carl then married a woman named Fairy, and they had two children whose names Virya refuses to remember. However, because Carl often mentions their names, Virya ends up unable to remove their names from her memory. Danielle, 10 years old, and David, 6 years old. Virya is even unable to forget their ages. Virya hates Carl because he divorced her mother. Of course, Virya hates Fairy even more and doesn't want to meet her and her children. Unfortunately, Virya has to meet Carl once a month until she reaches 21 years of age because there is such an agreement in her parents' divorce contract. Because she is 18, she still has to face Carl for another 3 years. Carl comes to their house as usual one Saturday. He comes alone because if he brings his wife and children, Virya will not see him. That day, Carl takes Virya for a fishing trip. It is winter time, January, and he is going to take her ice fishing. Virya's house is right by Lake Simcoe, and they will fish on that lake. As Virya comes out of the house, Carl asks her about her competition. Virya didn't allow her father to watch her skate in the competition, so he doesn't know how she did. Virya answers his question with a sour look because to her, there is nothing to celebrate. So, their conversation ends quickly. They both quietly pick up the ice fishing gear from Carl's truck and soon begin walking on the lake. It is a cold morning, but luckily it isn't snowing. The sky is clear blue and there is a bit of wind. Carl walks very carefully on the ice. Virya follows behind him. They both walk quietly and carefully until they arrive at their destination. Then Carl makes a nice hole so they can begin catching the fish underneath the ice. So, have you decided what major you want to apply for? asked Carl after they both have settled down comfortably beside the hole. They have dropped their baited lines down into the water and are waiting for the fish to take it. Yes, I've chosen accounting, answers Furia. Accounting? Don't you wish to be an engineer like me? Carl jokes. Never. I don't want to be like you, says Furia harshly. Carl is taken aback by his daughter's response. Although he knows that Virya still cannot forgive him for leaving Marilyn, Carl regrets Virya's response. Whoa, whoa, take it easy, my dear. I know that you still don't like me, but this is your life we are talking about. You shouldn't make a decision regarding your own future based on your emotional feelings. I heard that you're good at math and physics, so becoming an engineer is a pretty good choice, says Carl. Accounting definitely needs some good math too, Viria responds. I've made up my mind. I think it is an excellent choice. Grandma and Grandpa could make quite a lot of money being accountants. Well, I don't say that being an accountant is a bad choice, but don't you think it's a rather boring job? Carl comments. With current fast-paced technology, I don't think accounting is as boring as in the past. Besides, 
The only thing that I like to do, the only thing that is not boring, is skating. I want to be a skater just like mom. If I can win a competition, it would be the best thing that could happen in my life. If I cannot, I will still skate as a hobby, says Viria. Alright, if you've made up your mind, I'll support your decision. The fact is, whatever you choose, as long as you diligently pursue it, you'll be successful, says Carl. In her heart, Viria wants to say thanks, but she closes her mouth tightly and doesn't say anything. What is the meaning of Carl's support for her? He's no longer her dad. Wait, I got a fish, cries Carl excitedly. He quickly pulls up his fishing line, and soon the fish is flipping and flopping in his bucket. With one fish caught, they get more excited about this venture. Not long afterward, Firia also catches a fish. They are lucky that day. They, they got their first fish very quickly. Sometimes, it takes a very long time before they get a fish. Firia has recently turned 18, so this morning is the first time she has fished under her own fishing license. And she is very proud to be able to take pictures of the fish she's caught under her first Ontario Outdoors card. They get eight fish in total. Firia chooses three of them, while Carl keeps the other five. When they return to the house, Firia gives the fish to her mother. What a nice catch! Marilyn beams as she sees the fresh fish. Carl, are you going to eat lunch with us? I will cook one of these fish. Not today, thanks. We've got plenty of fish today. I will send some of these to my families while they are still fresh. I'll better get going. I'll eat here next time, says Carl, waving goodbye to his ex-wife. Bye then, drive carefully, says Marilyn, who also waves her hand. She turns to her daughter. Did you have a good day? She asks her. Excellent day. Look at this fish, mom. I caught it myself, says Furia. Marilyn looks at the other two fish in the bucket. Not a bad catch today, eh? I'll take one of these to grandma and grandpa. They will be very excited. I'll be back in 10 minutes to help you cook that fish, she tells Furia. That same Saturday, Furia has other visitors. The fact is, every Saturday, her friends come to her house to skate. Firia's house is custom built in such a way that they can have a skating rink in the basement of their house. Firia hates to admit it, but her father Carl is a very smart construction engineer. He was the one who designed their house and led the team in its construction. The basement is much deeper than a basement of an average home. In fact, there are three layers of basement. The first layer of the basement looks exactly like any basement in an average house in Canada. Carl had this P1 level made into a fully equipped fitness center. There is a door hidden on the floor of the first layer to get to the second layer of basement. This door is designed so that the heat from the upper levels of the house cannot enter the second and third layers of the basement. The wall on one side of the B2 level is made into a wine cellar. On the ceiling, there are white lights. On one wall, there are switches For these lights, and on the opposite side, there are some musical instruments, a karaoke system, and a complete audio system control for a DJ. The floor of B2 level 
can be opened up during skating practices. And of course, there is a door to the third layer of basement, the B3 level, where there is a huge 30 meter by 60 meter skating rink, as well as a Zamboni for cleaning the ice surface. On the ground floor, there is an open concept kitchen, living room, and dining room. It is like a huge space without walls. Only large pillars here and there are hiding behind cabinets, bookcases, and display cases. Viria's bedroom is upstairs on the second floor. There also are situated her mother's bedroom, two guest rooms, a laundry room, a media room with a huge TV and some comfortable recliner sofas, and a home office where computers, an internet modem, a printer, and other home office equipment can be found. Her friends say that Firia's home is very cold. It is actually half true. They use electric baseboard heaters throughout the house so that each room's temperature can be set individually. There is no heater in the B3 level where the skating rink is. The temperature on B2 level is always set to 5 degrees Celsius. The temperature in B1 level is always set to 10 degrees. The temperature on the ground floor is always set to 15 degrees. But the temperature in any room on the second floor can be changed according to preference. And because in each room there is an individual temperature control, Firia can set the temperature differently in her bedroom and in the home office room where she does her homework. But back to the visit from Firia's friends. Every Saturday during Firia's skating season, her skating friends come over. Firia's skating season is actually longer than the normal skating season. It begins in October and ends in May. The students, of course, have holidays within the season, such as Christmas holidays and March break. Most of these friends are schoolmates the same age as Viria. She has been inviting her friends to skate at her house for the last three years since she entered senior level skating. Now there are 12 of them, including Firia. They usually spend half the time learning skating elements, and then during the other half, they will spend their time choosing a song, choreographing a dance for the song, and practicing the choreograph dance. They always start with dinner together at 6 p.m. before they hit the ice. Some of them will come earlier to help Viria prepare dinner. Because Viria always provides dinner, each person will pay her $20 per month for food and snacks during their visits. Viria Today we have fish from your fishing trip, and last week we had free food from your grandparents. So does that mean we will have funds reimbursed this month? As James, one of the members of Finia skating group, while they are eating around a huge dining table. No, answers Viria. I plan to save any leftover money for next year, cause next year, most of us will be 19 already, and so we could have some beer or even some bottles of wine. How about that? That sounds like a good idea, says Tom. But all of you have to wait until I am 19 too, Xiang Mei quickly adds. She is the youngest among them. Don't worry, this is not a bar, so no one will care whether you've passed your birthday or not. And I don't think your parents will mind if you just take one can of beer, comforts Firia. 
Anyway, Philia, these two weeks we have had great tasty food. We really thank your mother and grandmother for cooking them. Compliments, Penelope. I'll tell them your message. Hopefully, they will cook for us again soon, Philia says with a wink at Penelope. Anyway, friends, today we will start practicing for our first skating show on the first Saturday of March. It will be a charitable event.